Hey there everybody, Slippery Slope is here with the second video in the physics series and with this one we're going to discuss two different forms of energy. As I said in the first video, we don't really have a great definition of energy. The dictionary definition for energy is the capacity for vigorous activity or available power. Now that doesn't sound very scientific. Available power, vigorous activity, <laughs> that, that sounds kind of uh, uh, not G-rated, but uh, yeah, we just need to conceptualize this for now, and then later on we could have our debates about what it all means. But motion changes all the time as a result of putting a force upon it, and that goes hand in hand with the two forms of energy we're about to talk about, kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and some call it the ability to do work, you will hear all about work if you go on and study physics in greater detail. And the thing is, the greater the mass of an object, and the greater the speed of an object, the more kinetic energy you have. Kind of makes sense, given it's the energy of motion. The only thing that you may not have been able to assume if you were born many, many years ago is that mass actually is a part of this. But it is. The greater the mass and the speed of an object, the more kinetic energy you have. Now let's say you did something really bad, like you broke the law and you're in trouble. Like it's not just a misdemeanor, you're going to get arrested and put away for a long time. You're not actually, this is just an example, don't get scared. Um, let's say you decide to steal a car and you start vrooming away. You pick up the speed in a very short amount of time, say five or ten seconds. You go from nothing and somehow in five or ten seconds you go to a hundred miles an hour. Well, lots of kinetic energy is now associated here with this stolen car. Remember, the greater the mass, and I guess if it was something else, can you imagine another sort of car? Then, yeah, combine that with the speed, and boom, the more kinetic energy you have. Well, hopefully the cops won't find out what's going on, but, um, whoops, turns out, here they are. Oh, <laughs> you like that noise? Uh, well, here's what happened. The cops found out. And the cops decided, you know what, man, or gal, I'm going to let you go if you do this one thing for me. I have an elephant, and I want you to take this elephant, and like that one R.E.M. song, like, I want you to push this elephant up the stairs. And you decide, well, I mean, that's kind of impossible, but okay, I'll try. It sure beats getting locked up forever. So what's going to happen here is you're going to put a lot of potential energy into this elephant. Potential energy is stored energy. It's held inside a gravitational field. Let's say you push an elephant up a slippery slope or, or up the stairs. Well, the potential energy is being transported against gravity. The potential energy ultimately ends up converted kinetic energy if the elephant is put into motion. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's say, all right, we managed to push the elephant up the stairs. Thank the good Lord. Well, it turns out that the cop is a psychopath and he's not really a cop. And he, like, pushes the elephant and it falls out a window. Let's assume that it somehow stays alive and doesn't get hurt because animal cruelty sucks. So let's just assume that the elephant's okay. Well, that elephant just exerted, oh boy, tons of kinetic energy because the potential energy ultimately ends up converted to kinetic energy. Well, that's all conceptual, no math in this video, and we're going to talk more about this stuff eventually, so if this all sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook, don't worry. And next time, I'm going to talk about something really useful and really simple. I mean, your great-great-grandmother could understand it, your great-great-grandfather, whoever. So, yeah, stick around. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. Slippery Slope signing out. Peace.